Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Harrop, I DTechX chairman, and I'm here to come to the legendary uh, TNO of the Netherlands That's and talk to an Italian exactly. who's uh, the science guru. His name is Andrea Gasparini, and he's going to explain what they're doing that's exciting and exhibited here at the ID Tech X show, which is quite a buzz at the moment. Over to you, Andrea. Yeah, so morning, everybody. So here we're showing uh, our uh, 3D printed sensor. So the special thing about our sensor is that we are not using conventional material for the sensing elements, but rather continuous carbon fiber because they also have piezo-resistive oh, properties. Wow. So we can 3D print a part. Piezo-resistive. Exactly. Yeah. So when we stretch it, for example, I can have a look at this, that I stretch it, and then the signal output in blue, it's actually increasing or decreasing. Good, right. So. Here we have also a three-point bending, so a deflection sensor, so when I press, you can see here there's a really drastic change in the electrical output right. upon deflection, so right. when I press. And then I can have information about the level of yeah. bending of my part. So are we talking about scientific testers with ultra-precision or something that that's, does a good job and is affordable in clothing or something? Exactly, so in, the, in closing we still have an purchase that uh, so we ha still haven't had that focus I would yeah. say in textile yeah. where we're looking more into composites so we would like to right. install the fibers which are actually used mostly for enforcement yeah. more on the composite industry so these are sensors they need to work in harsh conditions when we have a lot of force that is applied and this is where they are co basically competitive yeah. with uh, the other technologies so this is good for what? What's your dream? What's exactly. So imagine structural health monitoring of composite parts. In airplanes, we want to monitor, for example, brackets ah. if they're breaking. And before they break, we can get information about ah. uh, their, their, their structure. So in ah. case there is damage, this is what it's for. So be integral in the structure. Exactly. And you don't see the... You don't see the fi we don't see the sensor. They are no. protected, for example. Yeah. There's not uh, influence from the atmosphere, the moisture, and temperature. More structural electronics, then. Exactly. Absolutely. That's embedded sensors. Yeah. For example, this is that is a pressure sensor. So we can press here, and then as well, we see a change in the output resistance as well. So we have these three modes: so pressure, strain, and deflection. So with this, we are already able to cover um, one of the uh, at least the largest uh, uh, type of sensor that uh, that we can uh, we can implement into composites. The TNO is quite a big organization now. Isn't yeah, it? we are uh, about 40, uh, 4, 000, uh employee yeah. distributed within fifteen centers in in the Netherlands at the, at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and we're growing, so it's, uh, it's really exciting. Between different multidisciplinary teams on this sort of thing. Exactly. So we are the expert in material science, but we collaborate with uh, whole center, which is based in Eindhoven, is based on the large area electronics. So they have the knowledge how how to help us to make it even more sensitive or even better in terms of integration into much more complex uh, structures, for example. But we really work on material composition, processing, and relate the two together. Excellent, and it, it, you're essentially a research and design uh, center. You're not going into production. Exactly. So that's also something we have to make clear sometimes with the the, the visitors. They come here. We don't sell materials, but definitely we provide solutions. But in the frame of a project together, so we can, for example, elaborate compounds. We install, we use them, we probe the, uh, the properties, but then we need always to engage a material producer, like yeah. plastics or carbon yeah. fiber, and then they're gonna scale it up with production and provide that specific grade of material that function for that specific application. So what sort of people are showing an interest, if it, or is it yeah. too early? I mean, is it pull through, you know, people who want to actually use it, put it in an airframe, or is it people who are materials companies who want something new to offer, or what? So, interesting, and this is something that we're really proud of, we actually have interest from the whole value chain, from the material suppliers, that they want to get a higher value of their well, starting exciting. material. That's wonderful. And then at yeah. the same time, we see the end user, which is, yes. for example, yes. the part manufacturer that yes. wants to have parts that have an extra function, for example, so they can mm -hmm. also increase that uh, that value of their part, and they can provide a better service. They can provide parts that not only mechanical reinforced, then they perform well, but they also have sensing functionality. So 
that's that, a bit our broader range of, uh, of people well, that are interested. That's really powerful, that's really good, that's very exciting. Uh, so what are the environmental credentials? Yes, exactly. So what, what we see, so the field of application, for example, can be a lot in defense, in defense, as a field of application, so in defense, aerospace, we see interest, we see can be also orthopedics. You want yeah. to have a sensor in your orthosis or in your uh, processes that can give you information about uh, uh, to the, the load that you're applying yeah. on a part and then you can, uh, uh, you can back it up a little bit and modify it. Like we've seen a lot of sensors here in, uh, on the show, but they're mostly installed on the surface of the processes or in surface of, of, of a part. Here they are inside, so they're fully uh, embedded in the structure and you can information about what is happening inside as well. And, but it's, you're describing a number of ones with uncontrolled disposal. You won't be able to control the disposal. So is it a, a safe product? Is it a biodegradable product? Is it whatever? Where does it fit in in definitely terms of green credentials? Exactly. So definitely, so plastic and this kind of plastic for composite, they're not necessarily biodegradable, but they are recyclable. Ah, right. So instead of using a resins, like a thermoset, which are not a, uh, biodegradable and not recyclable here is that we're only using thermoplastic so they can be uh, basically what, reused what thermal plastic? exactly so it can be they? yeah so they are polymers for example so instead of being raisin they are polymers they can be uh, modeled with heat and then they give the shape and uh, and then at the same time they can be either uh, shredder again and then reprocess again what so, polymers so it's polyamides mm. so it can be a high oh, temperature right. uh, mm. polymer like also PEKK or PEEK can be polypropylene, polycarbonate. So uh, pretty good environmentally. Yeah. I think that we are safe as well on the side. Also, Adi Manufacturing still hasn't that big uh, uh, mm. volume of plastic that are no, no. Uh, produced or used. So it's and inherently fairly low cost materials, aren't they? Sorry. Uh, Very. Uh, yeah. The, sorry, I didn't get the yeah. question. The, yeah. uh, cost of materials. Yeah, it's uh, so for any manufacturer, actually, the cost of materials is not that relevant because the uh, if we make a cake with the cost of production, yeah. is more about time, it's more yeah. about volume. So Good the ma yeah. the material actually is, is the least uh, of yes. our problem at the moment. Good. And is there anything we've missed out? What's in the cabinet there or should we be looking there? Of or? course, yeah. It's the other side of, we'll the, go. Uh, we'll go. of the project. So here, yeah, yes, is. exactly. So there we go. So here we have uh, also our side of activities, which are instead of being based on uh, thermoplastic, is photocross-linkable resins. So here we use light to give a shape to um, a liquid resin. And here the field of application, they are mostly medical. So we see in dental, for example, where we process two different materials that in this case are different colors because our teeth they have different gradients in, the, in color. They're not always just one monocolor, but we can actually provide an extra functionality, which is in color in this case. Or, for example, we see here a dielectric antenna, so which is made for uh, uh, application in, uh, in, the, uh, in the radar type of sectors, where we can actually make very complex uh, shape with this specific design that is really hard to be made by any other means because we have three materials with three different uh, properties that are needs to be uh, present at the same time in the same object. So that's an advantage of adding manufacturing compared to uh, incumbent technologies. There's uh, considerable limitations with 3D printing still aren't there in terms of some of the things that you would like to print but you can't but there seems to be an advance here in terms of uh, Yes. Continuous fiber. Exactly. That. Yeah. So now continuous fiber can be also co-extruded together with the polymer to make structures that are strong, uh, much higher uh, mechanical properties compared to other uh, short fiber filled composites. And at the same time, you can make really complex layouts. For example, we have complex shapes that are really hard to be made by traditional also uh, composite manufacturing. So very intricate shape, very um, lightweight structure, they're really hard to be made. And adding manufacturing has an advantage there. So the know-how there is in the machine or is this special fiber and someone would wish to license from you to make special fiber for it, for the exactly. feedstock? Is it both or the... Is, so I would say there's a relation be between the two. So adding yeah. manufacturing is always a mix between three things. Yeah. Software, how yeah. good is your software in fiber placement? Yeah. It, so to create your part. 
is in the material property, so the specific fiber that yeah. can resist, for example, passing through a you nozzle, they're strong. Someone needs to supply a special fiber. Yeah, exactly, so oh, they have really high-grade toe. Business. Business. So one K toe, which are the, um, the, the most expensive one that are normally used for aerospace application, now we use them here. And at the same time, also the, uh, the, the, the printer. So we need a good printer that can enable the, the processing of continuous fiber, which is not, uh, there are not many players at the moment on, uh, on the field. And the bottom here yeah, is this something? Yeah, exactly. So here what we see is that with uh, photocurable resins, we can, for example, make molds. So very complex molds that we can close as well. We can inject our material and then the part is going to take the shape, for example, of this lobster. It's just a simple example, but the powerful uh, the AM is very powerful in making really complex shape that can be used on a maybe very frequent uh, cycle, but uh, not for uh, a long time, I would say. Very impressive. Well, thank you very much. I it was a pleasure for me. Of course. Your virtuosos, we admire you. Well done. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.